Good morning, church, and welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Church, alive and online. Welcome to all those who have joined us from near and far. We are honored that you have invited us into your home and into your lives. We come to you from our sanctuary here on Plank Road in Fredericksburg, Virginia. And let us know that you are here either through Facebook or Facebook chat or through the comment box if you're viewing through the Google link. You can put your prayer requests in the comment section that runs on the right of our live stream. Today is a special day in the life of Resurrection Lutheran Church and, and of the Lutheran Church worldwide. Now you notice that things have turned a bit red. Today is Reformation Sunday. It is celebrated on the Sunday closest to October 31st. And it, today is an opportunity for us to celebrate our history that Martin Luther and then others, um, <clears throat> that, then others that started. So it was on October 31st that Luther nailed the 95 Thesis to the Wittenberg church door. And today, you are encouraged to wear red as a reminder and in celebration of our continual reformation as we are reminded that we are justified by grace through faith. Today, the fresh flowers on the altar <clears throat> are given to the glory of God in memory of David Lee Louderback by his parents, Gail and Wayne. Our lantern today is lit in memory of Gloria Malello, mother of Terry Evers, who passed away on Monday. Resurrection is a faith community reflecting the love of Christ through reaching, loving, and caring. No matter where you live, there are several ways to be a part of our community and to participate in the mi mission of God's reaching, loving, and caring. Now, immediately following today's worship, the adult forum resumes via Zoom. Here I Stand examines the ELCA so social statements, and today we finish up our discussion, create, Caring for Creation, Vision, Hope, and Justice. This evening, we'll gather via Zoom for Theology Pub. And what better way to celebrate the Reformation than Martin Luther style? It's BYOB, and it begins at 7 p.m. On Thursday, join the MICA study group led by Pastor Ken Martin via Zoom. This group welcomes all regardless of gender or age. The group is currently studying White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo. And each week, study questions are sent to those who have signed up. Each year, RLC participates in stocking stuffing for local school children. For more information and to sign up to be a stocking stuffer, be sure to do that no later than October 30th by calling the RLC office. And the number can be found on our webpage or our Facebook page. On Saturday, October 31st, RLC will deliver meals to people in motels who are homeless and food insecure. Volunteers are needed to help to de deliver meals on behalf of MICA Ministries. Sign up through the link on our Facebook page. Next Sunday, we observe All Saints Sunday. Please submit names of your loved ones that you wish to be remembered no later than October 30th so that their names may be included and sung in the Litany of the Saints. Link to all these activities can be found in the events section of the Resurrection Lutheran Facebook page, which you can access even if you don't have a Facebook account. This week, we finish our worship series, Pressing On, with these two commandments. And what better way to reform than to return to Jesus' reminder of the core of our gospel, to love God, love people, and make disciples. Now, when asked what the greatest commandments were, Jesus' reply was simple, love God and love neighbor. And that's where we start this week, that foundational statement of who and whose we are and how we are called to be living our lives. We press on to embrace these truths, to make them descriptive of our entire lives on these two commandments. Leading us in worship today are Allie Beck, Alex Johnson, and Chuck and Ann Price. 
In the booth, we have A.J. Beck, Robert Schul, and Jeff Slunt. And I am Heidi Moore, pastor here at Resurrection. So wherever you are, join us as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship of the one true God and sing with us the call to worship, Come All You People. You can find the words on the screen or in the bulletin. And again, welcome. Join us in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. We, we confess, confess that, that we are captive to sin and, and cannot free, free ourselves. ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through, Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our, our Savior, Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Today, our piece is brought to us by the Tweens in Between, better known as the TNT group, as well as our middle school youth and their families. Peace be, Peace be with, with you. you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. and also with you. Join us now as we sing, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and, and also, also with, with you. you. Together, let us pray. O oh Lord God, you are the holy lawgiver. You are the salvation of your people. By your spirit, renew us in your covenant of love and hold us to, and to care tenderly for all our neighbors. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Join us now for singing and reading of Scripture. The Lord of hosts is with us. The Rico. 
works of the Lord. What desolation God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes wars to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then, and know that I am a God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. A reading from Leviticus chapter 19 and Jeremiah chapter 31. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, Be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Do not pervert justice, do not show partiality to the poor, or favoritism to the great, but judge your neighbor fairly. Do not go about spreading slander among your people. Do not do anything that endangers your neighbor's life. I am the Lord. Do not hate a fellow Israelite in your heart. Rebuke your neighbor fairly so that you will not share in their guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, there declares the Lord. This is a covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Let us welcome the gospel in song. <clears throat> have sought a light in the heart of the darkest night. Just when we thought all would be lost, we were drawn to the light of God. God is in sight, God is the night, drawn to the light of the morning. Glorious and bright, oh what a Gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadduc Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? And they said to him, The son of David. And he said to them, How is it then that David, 
by the Spirit called him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David just thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. So it's Reformation Sunday, and I have to tell you that around Halloween, we can find really cool stuff in the store. And so I'm shackled. And these are reminders that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. And the truth is not in us. You see, it's not about what we do or don't do, but it's rather what God has done, is doing, and will do. <clears throat> it is the word of God, the God that loves us, that sets us free to love neighbor. And because God loves us, God calls us children of God, and we are God's people. And God remembers our sin no more. So you see, I'm free. And we're set free from sin to love God and to love neighbor. Pressing on on these two commandments. Now, there's an unwritten law among siblings or even BFFs. And it goes like this. See, I can say or do or mess with my siblings or BFFs. But don't you dare do it because that's my brother or sister or my brother from another mother or my sister from another mister. You mess with him or her and you're going to mess with me. See, in the text this morning, Jesus speaks law to us too a law that's been written down. Jesus is on day two of the showdown with the temple authorities with contentious talk around paying taxes, loyalty to Caesar, and the resurrection. And the tension is mounting between Jesus and the religious authorities. And here in the scripture this morning, we have a rare moment when the lawyer tests Jesus and so, rather than answering a question with a question or a parable, the rare more moment is that Jesus gives a direct and concise answer. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. See, that's it. Love God, love neighbor. Easy peasy, right? See, love of neighbor and love of God are connected, inextricably connected. And I don't know about you, loving neighbor is really hard to do. I think what is making this difficult for all of us is that we're living in a fear-based and scarcity-based culture right now. Everything that nurtures our souls, that feeds us, has been taken away, and we are not living normal lives. You know what? I don't even know what normal is right now. I just know I can't go back to it. And instead, I must press on toward it. Love of God and love of neighbor is born in community. But we don't have community right now as we st understood it back on March 15th. You see, it's different now, and it will be different in the future as well. We gather, but physically distanced. We have touchless sharing of the peace. Our communion comes in pre-sealed little plastic cups. And when gathering at our 5 p.m. service, we hum the tunes as we meditate on the words. And I don't know about you, but that's just not singing to me. We need God, and we need 
each other. If we're going to get through this, we have got to do it together as a community. We need each other. Even the ones we don't like, even the ones we don't talk to, even the ones who don't believe as we do, even the ones who do not dress as we do, even the ones who do not think as we do. We live in a deeply divided, politically charged culture, and when this is all over, the work of healing and reconciliation will be the work of the church. See, at the end of the day, church, our faith communities, should be a place of reformation, rising above partisan politics to see other people as God sees them, and to love like Jesus, showing God's love for all people. And when God says all, all means all. And so let's face it. Love can be really offensive sometimes. It's demanding. It's risky. It's dangerous. It can even land you on a cross. And yet God commands that we love our neighbor. Love God with our whole selves, with all my heart and all my soul and all my mind, love my, sa- love my neighbor the same way? Yeah. So maybe it's a good time to talk about what sort of love are we talking about here, Jesus? So let's take a look back in Leviticus. And right before the selection that Colleen read this morning, the the verses command Israel to not gather the gleanings or gather the falling falling grapes, but rather leave them for the poor and the alien, the stranger, the immigrant in the community. And God says, I am the Lord your God. When you glean a field, it's the grain or the corn that's left around the edges of that field. Now, God goes on to instruct them to refrain from lying, cheating, stealing, slander, hatred, grudge-bearing, injustice, and vengeance. This is what love for neighbor looks like. And nowhere on this list is passion. Our Culture equates love with intense remote uh, response, an intense emotional response from chocolate to cats to spouses. This is not the love that Jesus is talking about. You see, love in the Bible is neither passive or strictly emotional. It is an active love. God loves, we respond. Feelings and emotions do not enter into the equation. Rather, it is an agape love, a passionless love, as God cares for God's creatures and God's creation. More accurately, it can be referred to as loving kindness, which is active mercy marked by patience and generosity. It is not a passive emotion. It is something that we do. So the implications are clear. Loving neighbor is not a choice, is a choice. Loving neighbor is a choice, but not a feeling. And we are to love God and love neighbor. We are to choose love. And when we love God's people, we are loving Jesus at the same time. And one more thing. Keep in mind that in the Greek, the heart is not the center of the emotions. The heart is the center of the will. So how are we to choose love even when we don't want to? Even when we don't feel like it? Even when it involves someone that is absolutely repugnant to us? How are we to love like Jesus? Well, here's a quote from Madeline Langle. The best way to help the world is to start by loving each other, realistically, with understanding and forbearance and forgiveness. 
To love like Jesus means to see with Jesus' eyes and to love wholly what is there and not what we choose. Salt Project, a progressive Christian blog, talks about agape love like this. It's a love that looks like listening. It's a love that keeps God's commandments for the sake of personal and communal well-being. And it is a love that looks like kindness, generosity, and respect for our neighbors. So it looks like, the love looks like eschewing all claims to vengeance and bearing grudges. And as the election and its aftermath approaches, this kind of love is worth underscoring. This is where the reconciliation and reforming work of the church will be so vital in the healing of the nation and of our communities. God loves us so much that God demands that we care for one another. And think about this. This work is already happening in ways we put love into action through all the mission work that we do. For each person or community, it will look different according to what God has called us to do. Be it feeding programs through Micah or Brisbane, advocacy, wearing masks to protect others, speaking out when injustice occurs, empathetic listening, and as I have told you all before, for me, it means learning how to be anti-racist. Now, there are all kinds of laws in the Bible, 613 to be exact. And according to Matthew, it all boils down to this. Love God, love neighbor. It is a choice, an action, a behavior, seeking the good of another no matter what. And to love God is to love God's children, all of God's children, all 7.8 billion of us, because God all means all. And so we press on, reforming as we seek to live life as God intended it to be, as we were created to be. Loving God and loving neighbor, on these two commandments, we press on. Amen.
With confidence and grace in God's mercy, let us pray for the world and all those in need. Renew and inspire the church in the freedom of the gospel, O oh God. Where the church is in error, reform it. Where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it. Where the church is divided, unify it. Ignite in us the working of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the earth changes, as mountains shake and the waters roar, May we care for this planet as a holy habitation for all things. Sustain all peoples and lands, recovering from natural disasters of any kind, especially from fire and flood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide areas of the world divided or traumatized by conflict, especially in our own land. Free all from slavery and human trafficking, and protect all in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear in our, our prayer. prayer. Release those living in bondage to debts, to chronic pain, to addiction. Grant healing touch to those who are ill, and especially we remember Angela Jones, Cooper Hill, Linda Johnston, Gunny Todd, Lee and David Hall, Bill Evans, Sue Perdue, Linda Kennedy, Marlene Jordan, Christy Rosheim, Virginia Sherlock, David ha Doris Howe, Al Goober, Robert Harefield, Hope Hall, and Bob Pumphrey. We ask that you be with the family of Gloria Melillo upon the entrance of her into the church triumphant. Be with the Evers family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this family of faith, we give thanks for courageous voices that have remained firm in their commitment to the one who frees us from sin and death. Centered in your grace, unify us in the hope of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even in death, you free us and give us a place in your house. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown us truth and freedom, especially Martin Luther and those who work for the renewal of the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank you for your support of the mission and ministry of Resurrection Lutheran Church. Just this past weekend, 30 people were helped with a meal at Brisbane Center and shelter for those who find them, themselves homeless or food insecure. Because of you, this ministry can go on. And because of you, we will be feeding people who are in motels this coming weekend and the following weekend again. Thank you for your support, but most importantly, thank you for your prayers. Oh, yeah. 
into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Savior taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Join us in our celebration song. Jesus is a Receive the blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless us and keep us in eternal love. Amen. Let it be said of us that the Lord was our passion, that when gladness we bore, every cross we were given, that we fought the good fight, that we finished the Yeah. 
as we send you out in mission this day, this Reformation Day. Just a few reminders. Here I stand, the Adult Forum is immediately following this worship service at 11.30 a.m. Zoom link in the Facebook section. Holy hops, it's Theology Pub at 7 p.m. tonight. Micah Study Group on Thursday. The Zoom links are in the announce, in the events of our Facebook page. And next Sunday, we'll remember all the saints, those that have entered into the church triumphant during the Litany of Saints. We have a virtual coffee hour immediately following next Sunday's service. So we'll see you here next Sunday at 10 a.m. And until then, may God bless you and keep you close. And may the peace of Christ be with you all. Thanks be Peace to, to God. God. Let the cross be.